Okay, hi, good morning, everyone. Sorry, we got a few minutes delayed uh, before we could start off. Uh, uh, thanks for your patience and joining for the session today for the second day of uh, eGov Digit Partner Training Program, where uh, yesterday we talked about uh, the overview of, uh, of the eGov and Digit how this could be implemented for urban local bodies, uh, what are the scope, how the program is governed, and uh, what are the you know, uh, infrastructure and skill requirements of uh, implementation of digit. We also covered the, uh, the platform overview around a uh, digit uh, implementation where we discussed the uh, architecture, microservices, and coexistence in the second session, and then we uh, went into the DevOps uh, DevOps session for the digit, and we talked about uh, how deployment, infrastructure sizing, how you can you know uh, plan your infrastructure, and how do you monitor this. Uh, now today uh, we are going a little ahead, and we are looking at some of the applications and solutions that has been built over digit. We will cover mgram, seva, and property tech in the current session. And then we'll move on to the on, online business plan approval system, and we'll also try to see how we are you how you know uh, the shared uh, data uh, data registries and uh, open APIs are helping uh, the scale up uh, scale up of these applications and how this is coming up in the dashboards and all of that. So that will give it a flavor of uh, how digit can be used. Uh, for for various uh, you know urban local bodies, we also plan to do it a uh, fecal sludge management, but due to some uh, unavoidable circumstances, the trainer could not join today. So in the second session, we'll miss him, miss that part. But we'll cover first three. So in the morning first session, in eleven to uh, one, we'll cover mgram, seva, and property tax, and then we'll reconvene at two and to cover uh, online business plan approval uh, systems. With that, uh, uh, good morning again, and my name is Vibhor Bansal. Uh, we, uh, the couple of announcements, we, uh, you can use your chat windows to interact with uh, colleagues uh, and your pa fellow participants. You can submit your questions in Q&A box and we'll uh, try to address uh, as many as possible. You can upvote your questions so that we know, uh, uh, you know, you can upvote up fellow questions uh, if there are question already there which you also wanted to ask, please support it so that we know that this question is a priority for most of the audience. At the end of the session, there would be a 30 second feedback form, uh, which will help us uh, to, get your, uh, uh, to get your feedback and understand how uh, relevant or useful the session was. And this will also help us in improving our future delivery. So, with that, I stop here and I'll hand it over to Satish. Uh, Satish uh, uh, will this uh, will uh, this, uh, tell us how Mgram Seva has been developed on top of Digit. What is it and how uh, it is scaled up and how the uh, data dashboards are moving uh, uh, here. So, Satish, over to you. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Yeah, so there's a question on the chat, Q&A, and uh, as well as on the chat, so whether water and sewerage will be covered. Uh, you would want to answer that? And I'll talk I don't it. think that we would be, no, we won't yeah. be covering water and sewerage. We would be covering, I think Mgram Seva is yeah. about water uh, management. Uh, yeah. And uh, Satish, you can help. Uh, you can help uh, Krishna understand what would be the scope of your uh, presentation during Mgram Seva, because ultimately Mgram Seva is all about how are we managing uh, the water connections, water billing uh, in the state of Punjab and uh, and other states. Uh, that that's where it's been implemented. Okay. So so just to answer that quickly, uh, Mgram Seva, what we are demoing today is a light version of the. Uh, water and sewerage module. So this is 
primarily for the rural uh, communities where uh, there is a gram panchayat gram sabha level community that is uh, formed to maintain the water asset that has been installed by the department of uh, water and sanitation and in the rural space so the objective under jal jeevan mission is to cater the water needs uh, for every household even in the rural so the, the uh, goal is to cover 100% of the houses in the in the rural sector so that was the uh, program for uh, under jal jeevan mission jjm they call it as and this this so you have, you have, you have been seeing uh, uh, urban space uh, where digit is being used uh, but this is the first time where we are using the uh, digit uh, a technology basically the digit platform uh, and built a small scale solution which will basically digitize and uh, systemize the water uh, revenue processes water data management and water revenue proce uh, processes at gpwsc level which is what we are going to demo also right uh, <clears throat> let me share share my screen please let me know if you are uh, able to see that um yes we can see your screen good okay let me just uh, start okay so so this is this is the landing page so every gpwsc so just to give a context as i've already given a um, a little bit of context about that so gpwc is a uh, gram panchayat water sanitation committee which is a tri party committee which is formed uh, out of uh, dwss department uh, gram panchayat and the gram sabha at the village level so this is the, the, the committee's primary responsibility will be to manage the asset uh, manage the uh, asset that was uh, the, the capital asset basically what that is that is installed by the uh, department of water and sanitation under jal jeevan mission uh, to cater the water needs for the village village or multiple village so there are single single village schemes and multi village schemes multi village scheme is where there is a common asset which caters the water needs for both the villages because the topography supports and the landscape over there supports uh, like, you know single water source for both the villages they they execute a multi village scheme also but still the committees are at the village level who will, will be in charge to do the collection of uh, the revenue water revenue and maintain the asset that is there asset is basically the water pump uh, what over a tank which is which is regularly maintained using chlorination and so on right uh, so so this is the process that is uh, that is that is coming under the maintenance part uh, if there is a major asset or uh, capital investment recapital investment that is needed so they will reach out to the department once again but till then they have to uh self sustained basically uh, uh, to do the revenue collection and maintain the maintain the uh, asset that is installed okay so that is the primary need and uh, that is the objective so out of this 13000 odd villages in punjab uh, 4500 have been handed over to the committee uh, around 4500 roughly and there are still many more which which are in the progress of you know yeah uh executing this project itself where where they are still sourcing water from multiple with either from ground water or from canal or from open water so depending on the source the project cost also will depend on okay. so likewise so around 4000 pilot has been handed over and remaining around 4000 to 5000 is uh, still under the department where where the committee in, in case where the committee is still not formed department only will run the show basically they the junior engineer of the department will deploy a revenue collector uh, at uh, at a village level who will, who will basically maintain about five villages so on a monthly basis he will go door to door and do the collection and he gets a 4% of commission and they maintain the assets also so completely managed under a je in case of handed over the committee which is minimum of 11 to uh, 25 members depending on the population committee is responsible to run the show it's like an association society which is formed and they are also expected to maintain the registers so there is a revenue registers and the expense expenditure register <laughs> expenditure side and they only have about five to six types of expenditure which i will showcase okay so since we were dealing with rural punjab so the platform is enabled on three different languages same like, uh, it is scalable you can have any number of languages right now we have enabled three punjab hindi and english any time they can switch to any any language okay for comfortability i'll choose english and then login
Okay. So he's a super user, and since uh, since he's been mapped to multiple villages, that's how you see multiple villages over here. Uh, Lodipur, Baruwal, GPWC, um, the Dabur GPWC, and Dabur Lower Upper, and Masaval GPWC. Okay, so these are the GPWCs to which he has been mapped. So Lodipur is the initial one which uh, we went live with. Okay, so you can see there are others also, Baruwal. So anytime if he's doing any collections or any transactions on a, a respective GPWC, you can just switch over to corresponding GPWC, GPWCs like this. Okay. Right. <coughs> so, and then there are few features that was enabled for the uh, users. So the users basically are about four types in this case. Uh, treasurer is the one, secretary is the other one, chairman, and then the revenue collector, basically the bill collector. So there are four types of uh, roles or four types of users, or even four. In this case, it is only four users. If there are multiple bill collectors, you can you can onboard them as well. Otherwise, it is only four users that will be accessing the system. And since we said it is primarily a mobile-based application. So it, since uh, there is no proper infra on the ground, uh, which is uh, which is there at the GPWC level, uh, on, on, at the GPWCs or at the uh, uh, sections over there, uh, they, the only option for them to access this application is their, their mobile uh, using an app. And which, keeping that in mind, we have uh, developed a really small, uh, small scale and uh, small application which will, which will cater to the kind of users that we are dealing with, and also kind of infra that we are. So this was tailor made to suit the kind of users and the kind of infra that is available on the ground. They don't even have an office on the ground. Many of them conduct meetings, uh, monthly meetings and association meetings. Even when we go down, they just put up chairs under this park where the overhead tank has been installed and that is their office so only very few i've got a small setup where they keep records they, otherwise most of in most, many cases the treasurer only will have all the records uh, all the registers in his house so that's how it is so so this is the kind of uh, uh, you know uh, infra and the kind of users uh, on the ground keeping this in mind there are a lot of things that we had to do away with and that we have to simplify with respect to the water and sewerage module functionality. Water and sewerage module that is used in Punjab, Burman is a large scale one, which, which, is, which caters to many services over there. And it has got a, a comprehensive demand framework and collection and reporting and all that. But all that would not be possible because they don't even have a, a system here. So, so, so keeping in mind that you know they can only do collection demand and maintain registers. We have made a. This is a, a re really small scale or can um, simplified uh, version of the water and sewerage model. I can say. So in our terms, we call them call it as a light version of water and sewerage. Okay. So you can change the language at any point of time. You can see that. Okay. Even even the reports, even the SMS that he sends, uh, will depend based on the language that is selected at the time of login. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, you can edit profile, change password, and simple thing over here. Okay. And uh, as far as the functionality is concerned, okay, so there are household registers. This is a quick uh, access to um, the household register and the demand that uh, that is that is there against every uh, household for doing the collections. So the pending collections is displayed. This is like a quick reference for the. Uh, uh, the revenue collector. So you can directly go go here and access. Uh, any name. So, so if he types any name here, all the all the names matching that will come up, and you can see quickly say, okay, when he's at the doorstep, you can quickly type in the name and go here, access it, and continue with the collection quickly. So he doesn't have to go to collect screen and then search for a consumer and then collect. He clicks on collect and he continues. So that's the main purpose of the household register, and another uh, purpose of this is to see the list of uh, uh, consumers who, who, who have still got pending collections. So it will sort by pending collection and it will display. You can, display, you, you, you can access the information, right? So that's about also register. Collect, collect payment is the regular monthly process that he does. So you can search by any of the name or you can search by contact number. You can search by a couple of options based on which you can search. You can view the consumer details from here. 
and then proceed with kalp. If he has got outstanding bill, then if there is no outstanding, he will not be allowed to do any collection. There is no outstanding bill against him. So he can access the previous receipts that we generated. He can share it via WhatsApp, download it as PDF, and then share it also, or share the link of the PDF via WhatsApp, which uh, the, the consumer can access it and print it or uh, download it. Print mini receipt is a new feature that we developed. So since digital uh, mode of accessing information was difficult on the ground because some people, not everyone will have a WhatsApp uh, or a smartphone to have WhatsApp on it. Um, so what 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 they insisted was they wanted a, a, a physical print, a print out of the, uh, of the receipt. So they can't carry. So when they do door to door collections, they will not be able to carry a, a, a huge uh, setup of printer, right? So we had to um, uh, develop a small integration feature to integrate this with a, a Bluetooth printer, which you will see in uh, many of the posts. This is uh, post machines that you would have seen in any retail things, right? So basically, uh, so we have integrated to, uh, with the Bluetooth. So basically, when you should uh, trigger a, a print command over here, it will search for the Bluetooth printers which which are there in the vicinity, and you can connect to that printer and shoot a printout. So it's basically, a scroll sort of print which will go out. Okay. Mm. So this 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 basically. Uh, gives the authenticity of the collection that is made so so people were so happy so this there is another interview that we conducted on the ground and to take their opinion in one of the interview one of the citizen one of the consumer actually told that you know this this is really helpful because in many cases may the revenue collector is the secretary's son or relative only who will randomly come and say okay this is the demand and there is no track and there is no authenticity for that demand so you said this is the outstanding uh for you uh, as of this month this is what you have to pay because they don't get to access the register they don't get to access the they don't have any uh, legal document or a, 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 a physical print of the receipt earlier so this was very useful for them so this is the kind of uh feedback that we got from the ground okay right. uh, let me show you if there is any collection that can be done. Let me pick it up from household register only then. So when he clicks on collect payment, he can do a partial amount payment also or a full amount payment also. So, he, so only cash is enabled now because he's on the ground. And uh, once the payment integration MO is signed between the gateway partner and the department, we will be enabling the online uh, method also, so online mode also. So for which, uh, as part of the demand generation, there will be an SMS sent to the consumer, which will which will basically have the link for the consumer to, to, for consumer to go online and do the payment. Uh, in case of door-to-door -door collection, so if the payment method is online, it will show up a, a QR code, which, which can be scanned. So, so when, once he selects online over here, he will not be allowed to do the collection. It is just a mode of sharing the SMS, resharing the SMS information which was earlier sent. So the consumer can directly scan on his mobile, scan that QR code, and then directly go to the, uh, it will navigate to the uh, web portal where he can do the online payment for this, against this con connection ID. Right. So that's the plan that we have proposed and that is what is getting implemented. We are waiting for the MOU to be signed. Okay. So when he clicks on collect payment, it generates a receipt for the same. So, so you, if you want to see the receipt, <coughs> earlier receipts, you can access over here. So I'm not I'm not triggering any transactions for because it get it, uh, it sends an SMS also, even if it is on UAT. Fine. Then that's on collect. So this is same. So you can search by any of this search criteria and list out all the older transactions that consumer has got, access the older receipts, and uh, basically same same as this. Like you can only print on download receipts of the old one. Okay. So, so this is a separate uh, action item over here so that you know in case only the bill collector will have option to collect payments the download bill options will be there for treasurer also so, since there were multiple roles on the ground 
who, who has to who had to have access to various functionalities we had to separate it out okay. and yeah so and then there is something called uh, uh, demand generation so month on month so here uh, the revenue collection or basically the demand generation is on monthly cycle so every month it is not metered so the on the ground there are two types of uh, connections that they issue one is uh, metered and other one is non metered so not many or almost about 96% of the gpws are on non metered only only few are there on metered uh, so metered is uh, 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 a little costlier in terms of costing so, so this, the capital investment is little more on that so that's the reason uh, they are having second thoughts on having meters in all the places otherwise mostly it is meet, uh, non metered connections so where the monthly flat amount of 150 rupees 70 rupees to 150 rupees has been charged for every household irrespective of the usage uh, the plan is to slowly move on to a metered connection based on the usage they will be charged so that is like uh, long way once once they have a buffer for the uh, capital asset uh, so they would they would roll out the metered connections also okay so so since this is monthly billing cycle so every month on 31st or on first of the month they are expected to choose the month of year like say for example once i am completing august uh, the august month will show up once i'm completing september september month also will show up over year so they're expected to choose the corresponding month and generate a bulk bill. On generating bulk bill, demand for the month of August gets generated and there will be an SMS sent out to all the, uh, all the, all the, all the connection holders with the bill and also a link to do the online payment. So these are the two SMSs that goes out. Just give me a second. Yeah. Just going through q &A. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm just going through the Q&A questions which are there. Krishna Swami Naidu's question is on water connection visible to the collective person is configurable. Um, not quite getting the question here or the village connections are visible for them. Ah, so basically the village connections only. Uh, so he's been mapped to tenants. So out of 4,500, if he's mapped to 10, all the 10 villages is what he will see in the drop down over here as soon as he logs in. So the primary thing that to access any transaction within a village is to select the appropriate village on the top, uh, on the drop down on the top. Without selecting that village, he will not be able to. So, so the, the selected village is the one which on which he will be doing the transactions and accessing the information from. Right. Order connection is equal to the collective person is con Yeah, it is configurable basically. The, the, the number of villages that is mapped only will be accessible to him. And uh, all the connection within that village only will be accessed to him based on the selection that he has made on top. And can you push notification to users on pending bills? Also, is escalation metrics uh, steps available for user who didn't pay bill? No, there is. So, see, so GPWC is an autonomous body. There is no escalation. There is, there is It is run by a committee. Uh, 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 unlike uh, the urban, where uh, if property tax is not paid, you just even even in urban, if property tax is not paid, it is not escalated. Right? So so they they the max they do is try to name and shame. So try to put up notice board with your name saying that this is the outstanding that you have got, and they make it open. So escalation is like as per the act, yes, they are supposed to be escalated and they have to come and then seize your property. All that is there. But uh, yeah, so that escalation metrics is not there. And, and this this is like the least thing that, the last thing that we can think of uh, to have an escalation and all. Okay. And it is run by the village people only. So village people know how to do the collections. So they know how to extract money from every household. So they're all neighbors. So like, there will be hardly about 150 to 200 households, uh, 200 connections in a village. And everybody knows everyone. So they know... And uh, out of this committee, 25 percent, so uh, 11 to 25 people, uh, as per the act, as per the uh, Jaljivan Missions uh, Committee Act, so they are uh, they are expected to have about 50 percent women in that, and women are the ones who will drive the collections revenues of So they know how to do it. So, 
So, and is the water connection database linked to property details for verification? No, as of now, because property tax is not levied on uh, gram panchayats, hence the property uh, the property data is not maintained at the gram panchayat level. GPWC. This is not gram panchayat. This is uh, gram panchayat water and sanitation committee, which is which is part from department of water, part from gram sabha. Apart from uh, Gram Panchayat. Gram Panchayat says the chairman and the subpanch will be posted as secretary and uh, chairman over here. That's the thing, uh, arrangement over there. So this, this is not the Gram Panchayat. Gram Panchayat as a body, it is like your urban local body. So, so they, are, they are entitled to do the property tax collection and all that. If the water is handed over to them, then they will they can link property to water. But right now, GPWC is a separate committee. It's not uh, in the rural departments, Gram Panchayat's body. Okay. There is consumer login dashboard. No, no there is no consumer login. So uh, the consumer will be accessing the uh, online, open online, or a quick, quick payment link, basically without logging in. So you will you will be able to see the. Uh, demand for a, so the link that gets uh, that is accessible to him will be the uh, link corresponding to his consumer ID itself. Okay, so based on the link SMS that is sent to him, he can open it and he will only be able to see the demand that is against that consumer ID for, for which is embedded in the SMS and he can do the payment from there. So for metered connection, will the system generate bills? Yes. I'll, I'll show that also how it is integrated with the meter data. I'll show you when consumer is created and I'll show you when how the how the metered connections bills are generated also. Okay. Fine. So this is the uh, demand generation month on month. Uh, we'll come to expenses at the later point of time. We'll get on to create consumer where you can see how a consumer of commercial, residential, metered, non-metered are created over here. Okay. So I give a name um, like uh, okay. phone number of the so which the SMS is sent regularly and uh, yeah old connection ID category. So this is for reference. If they are maintaining a register with with a unique reference number to the consumer, they can have use that so that they can access the same, access the consumer information at later point of time, even using the old connection ID. Till the time they, they switch over, they migrate to a system-based application, they can still be using the older uh, references for accessing the consumer information. Category, this is again used as MIS only. This is for uh, Jal Jeevan Missions reporting. So we were, uh, requested to add this information. Otherwise, we just add simple seven field information in this in this master also, because this was a requirement from the department. We had to add this category and subcategory. Otherwise, this is this is just for their political uh, reporting, nothing nothing more. Okay, and we have made it non-mandatory. So user doesn't have to key in this information. So, and household uh, house number. This is for if there is a uh, name or, or a phone number which is which is which you, in which he has got which has got two connections so then unique identification to differentiate between the two connections is the house number house number is the key street number and house number okay so this is to uh, give out the address of the connection this is the gram panchayat name which is which is basically chosen over here okay and then type of connection. This is what defines what type of connection it is, residential or commercial. So this is important because there is a rate matrix that is defined in the backend. So we don't have a UI master data for master screen for defining the rate because we know that the, the kind of users who, with, with whom we are dealing with will not be capable, will not be able to define the rate matrix or define the rate or maintain the rate master. That's why we have defined it at the state level. The state admin or the central team who is sitting at the state level only will be able to manage the rate master across all the GPWSs. In case there is any change the, uh, at the GPWS that needs to be done, they will have to report it to the IT team at the central level and they will only modify the data in the MDMS, master data management system. So that's our MDMS that we call. Okay. 
so commercial will have a different rate residential also will have a different rate that's the only difference otherwise connection is same now type of water supply if it is metered okay there is previous meter reading date which is captured as part of the legacy master data itself so that from the next billing onwards we will know uh, what is the meter uh, so like for example pre previous meter reading was as of august 1st right so this will generate a arrear bill as of august and meter reading number is say for example something like this meters previous meter reading is 100050 uh, now in the next bill when when he's generating a new bill in the consumer master when he's recording and generate a new bill if he gen, if he gives the meter reading as 10010 then the consumed units will be 50 previous meter reading minus the current meter reading so, so that's how we are generating bills and uh, user is expected to add the arrears also if any if as of this bill as of this particular date as of this uh, uh, meter reading date as of uh, I, I moved it if i give august as of august first what is my arrears that i'm liable to pay is what is expected to enter so so this arrears becomes the add-on to the new bill that gets generated on top of this so on, on submit it creates a uh, consumer with the arrear amount of whatever is keyed in here and the last billing date for him will be august and uh, as of august 1st and as of the latest bill the arrears is 300 rupees and now if uh, uh, the, uh, the bill collector when he goes to uh, doorstep every doorstep and when he records this so, so the bulk demand does not happen over here so the demand the bill generation need to happen House consumer by consumer. So when he walks in, he is expected to uh, record the um, um, meter reading, then generate a bill on the fly at the at the point of visit itself. Fine. Okay. Let me see. There are some consumer ch uh, chat. Mr. Cover, what component of used to be so how the data collaboration done post accept rate master is part of mdms yes rate master is part of mdms uh there's a template of rate master configured for city or more than a city more on indram seva yeah yeah i think yeah so, so you you will get more access on this link which we for us uh posted here and there is one more one you wish to cover what component of use yeah on the components on yeah so the website also has got the technical specification that is uh needed for setting up mgram sub so, so all that what you see on digit is the same thing that is used except for there are two new things that we have used over here uh that is uh intrude and uh, mongodb and metabase so mongodb is the new db that we have tried out apart from postgres and now we are thinking of moving everything onto a digit infrastructure itself so that work is going on now eventually after two months from now we would be migrating the uh, the data repository piece also onto uh, elasticsearch and dss from uh, uh the uh, druid and uh metabase so we are now using druid in place of elastic such where the flat structure of data is put in uh, sorry so where the flat structure of data is pushed in for every fiscal event and uh the uh for the visualization we were using dss and kibana earlier now on the new one uh we are using uh, uh metabase so i'll show you that metabase dashboard as well okay and uh, and and for the core database we are using the mongodb piece of that in, in place of postgres so so now uh, because of certain uh capability technical capabilities and limitations that are there on metabase we are thinking of migrating it back to digit so that end users or the partners don't have to worry about adding more skill sets like apart like you know once you are familiar with digit and digit uh, skill sets uh, so this this will become a burden, additional burden, because you will have to pick up uh, MongoDB, Druid, and Metabase also. Uh, so these are the three new uh, 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 you know, uh, technology pieces that will need to be picked up by the partners in case they have to consume mgram -SIP. So to avoid that, we are thinking of moving it back to uh, moving it back to the um, 
डिजिट कोर टेक्नोलॉजी पीस में सर ठीक है yeah it is hosted on digit so so the every piece that you see is from digit itself there are bit of customization that we have done just to simplify the functionality and to reuse the existing pieces like for example chalan is used for expenditure recording over here receipt is used as a expenditure payment over here but that is again configurable and using flags uh, the configurable flags uh, that is available in the uh, collection module okay uh, basically m, m, m collect module Okay. Fine. Spot billing application for use in POS devices. Yes. So meter reading ka bill generation is basically spot billing. So he goes to the doorstep. Uh, he records the meter reading, and once he generates a bill, instantly there is a PDF, and instantly there is a bill that is generated. And there is no bill print as of now because uh, POS division is integrated only for receipt printing. bill print is not available as well. so that if if they are okay with that they can just it's the same print they they just have to um, configure it we can just enable it for printing the bills also so just a new format of bill in the in the scroll format need to be defined that is one customization from our end if they need it will the system generate bills how how, how is it integrated with the meter yeah that's fine okay Okay. so this is on the consumer creation once consumer creation is done so so this is metered in case of non metered the only thing they will have to select is when was the last bill generated for him so june july august april model so if it is like you showing only current year because it, it cannot be beyond that or whatever so if is if uh, in most cases we put it as june and load load the data also because we are now getting request for doing the data load for all the consumers so as part of the etl process uh, we are doing the data load also for uh, for all the consumers across punjab so matlab so there is there's our partner team uh, ey who is who is taking care of the implementation on the ground and they do the uh, like data load in bulk for all the uh, Lacks of consumers that that we have collected from the group. Okay, so once he gives it, as of July, he is expected to write the arrears, key key in the arrears, and then from the next bill generation onwards, even for this, he can generate receipt. Even for the outstanding arrears of three hundred rupees, he can generate the receipt. But billing period for this would be from April starting of the year, April first to July thirty first, and then the next bill that is getting generated would be. Uh, August, so it's like uh, in the bulk bill generation. So, so, so uh, the uh, for uh, uh, when the August bill is getting generated, all the outstanding from this arrears will also get added as arrears in. Okay, fine. So, it's on the consumer. So, update consumer is like. So, once we load, if there is any correction before doing uh, any sort of transaction before generating any receipt. before generating any kind of uh, demand they are expected to correct the consumer data consume master data and then uh, then uh, then do the transactions on top of it is what we have we have advised them otherwise once that is done the user will not be able to modify the uh, last billing cycle and the arrears amount once the demand or receipt is generated against that arrears or the last billing cycle this gets blocked so user will not be allowed to modify any data corresponding to that uh, receipt or arrears and the billing cycles so going forward you can change the type of connection okay and then modify the details like name of the if if at all the consumer has changed the name is is taken over by another person over there if the, if the house then they will have to change the they can change the consumer name and phone number that's all otherwise the con connection id and the type of connection uh, uh the type of water supply will stay as it is okay. fine uh i'm just going back okay now and then for the use of treasures and like you know there is a dashboard at GPWC level, it's a we are not so. There's a dif different dashboard which is at the state level. I'll I'll take you through that. This is at the GPWC level, so they can see the 
uh, revenue expenditure and uh, revenue and expenditure trend over months in this way okay so what is what is the actual uh, collection what is what is the actual expenditure in each month and how is the uh, revenue happening so this this is basically the demand and the bill information that is getting for the detailed uh, this thing you can, you can access over here also so you can see this uh, there is sub, uh, in the month of April, there is a sub, surplus of 7,000. That is because demand is so much, pending collection is so much, actual collections are so much, and expenditure is very less. And what is the surplus is what. So, this basically surplus will be calculated based on demand and the expenditure recorded plus the areas. Okay. Fine. So, and they can also go back to access the previous year data. So, 21, 22, you can see. Uh, so they, they they started doing using the system from October where areas were being loaded till December only. So we went live in December and then they started creating consumers and we started loading consumer as of October because collection at the data collection had started off in the month of October itself. That's why you'll see some of the demand that exists in the month of October, November, and then and so on. And from there on, it is like build generation within the system itself. Okay. So demand month on month is what you will see here with, with uh, changes and this is basically the arrears that is piled up and this is the collections that uh, they they do. Okay. And this is on the dashboard which is accessible to the uh, uh, the users of the village the, of the GPWSC. So there is another SMS that we sent out, which is now um, uh, disabled, basically considering the cost uh, impact that they complained about for the SMSs used, uh, used, that were being used up. Okay, so, uh, so along with the payment, once the receipt is generated, so the, along with the receipt acknowledgement SMS, we also send a, a link for the consumer to do the rating on three different parameters. Like basically the water quality is sufficient the water supply and user satisfaction the satisfaction level so user is expected to go to that link and then uh, you know give the rating against each of these parameters so based on the parameters from this 150 consumers the average rating is what they can access over here so based on the month that is selected so uh, so this rating also will differ okay so the same thing will be shown in the receipts also receipt uh, PDF. I'll I'll show you the receipt PDF as well. Okay. Let me open any of the household register. And... This. Oh, okay, let me show the bill first. Is the tab visible or is, is, did I share only the tab? Uh, Vibur, can you confirm if my tab is visible? Yes, your, uh, your tab is visible. You're showcasing this uh, window. Yeah, a charge bill, a water charges bill. Yeah, so this is the bill format that they get. The receipt also will be similar to it. And this is how the areas are displayed and what is amount collected. Everything will be shown over here. Okay. And this is the um, MIS information. This is to bring in the transparency among the uh, households or all the consumers within the village. So they are displaying the collections also and expenditures also within the, of the previous month. So that they, they know on what uh, type of expenditure the amount is being spent and what is the total collection and how much is pending to be collected and so on. And the consumer rating is also displayed. Okay. So similar information will be there on the receipt as well. Okay. Fine. I have a few questions over here. Is there a remembrance of portal is same for every state or it will change based on the state government requirements? Yes. 
this is this is the uh, approach adopted by punjab so punjab has got a structure where uh, like you know the basically the jal jeevan missions project executions uh, hierarchy or the department hierarchy itself is defined in such a way that you know there are uh, three zones every zone has got four circles that means across the state there are only dual circles and every circle will have a a, a division basically so so, so so zones will be managed by chief engineer and then circles will be managed by superintendent engineer and then the division division is the point of contact between the field and the department so division is manned by a ddo so, or the uh, uh, executive engineer basically we call it as uh, ee so this this uh, drawing officer or the uh, ddo or the executive engineer who is the who is the key key person or responsible person to execute the project on the ground so he is the one uh, who is at the third level and then below him there is subdivision office who, which is on the field and then the section office which is manned by um, uh, uh, junior engineer uh, subdivision office is managed by subdivision officer itself sdo and then you uh, uh, a section is managed by a junior engineer and in each section there will be about 10 to 15 villages so this is the hierarchy over here in punjab but uh, when we move on to bihar bihar is in pipeline now bihar has got a different structure so the hierarchy mapping itself will be different over there okay so they have got block then uh, uh, gram panchayat and then the wards uh, within the gram do gram panchayat is just a, uh, a virtual grouping of the hierarchy so as coming from the gram, uh, rural department gram panchayat hierarchy but within this it is basically the block, uh, the block and then the wards over there so above block it will be uh, district uh, and then the and then the uh, district and then region and the state yeah so the so the hierarchy over the, in bihar is different from punjab so the the structure also would change so there it is ward the, there can be multiple wards and the committees formed at the ward level in bihar okay is sms as email alert notification functionality available yes so which is which is what we were talking about i'll show you because this user is not uh, uh, i'll show you how the uh, email alert and sms alert is also displayed in the notifications in the login uh, we can see that as well okay mm. option in the system for the consumer to raise any grievance yeah so they already have a, a grievance in the system or uh, they already have a grievance system within the department and that was the reason this grievance module was not built on top of it if that has to be built then the we uh, uh, so there is a toll free number on which consumers can call and register a complaint as of now if the grievance portal is there then consumer need to be enabled with a login a consumer portal need to be provided and then he, he should be able to file a complaint or open open page complaint filing also is possible but uh, that was not needed because they already had a, a so but we can still build or add these pieces from the digit grievance module on top of this that is possible that is one option no so 96% as of now on the ground is uh, flat charges that is like 75 rupees to 150 till december it was 150 rupees post december uh, i think uh, uh, um, they made an announcement that you know government will be bearing the uh, expenditure of electricity bill and all and then after aap came into picture they said government only will uh, bear all the electricity uh, since that has happened uh, no in december they made an announcement that government will be doing the payment of electricity bill electricity bill of of the gram at, at the gpwc level and that is when the user charges from 150 came down to 70 rupees depending on so some had 125 some had 150 some had 160 so all of it came down to 60 rupees and 70 rupees okay so this was the standard price across all the gpwc that we had to update okay since then it is it, it's like you know uh, uh flat 70 rupees because the major uh, major chunk of expenditure is now passed on to the department itself and it is flat charged as of now the i think in uh, in other states under jal jeevan mission for example in karnataka i think the coverage of uh, metered connection is more than 40 to 50% i think as of now that like as we are talking so the the metered 
uh, a meter installation is being rolled out across the state in Kannada. So at, on a serious note, but the adoption in, in in other states like Punjab and all is very slow and difficult also in regions like that. But yeah, uh, eventually the goal is to move on to a uh, charge based, a usage based. Fine. Hey, Satish, a uh, gentle reminder, we have about seven seven to eight minutes to go. So maybe you would like to cover your uh, session first and we we'll come on to the uh, Q&A <laughs> towards yeah. the end. Yeah. One question on the chat by Saeed is that which digit version is uh, used to host mgram server? So I think you want to know. Uh, I think this was 1.6. Uh, let me check if it is. I'll, I'll reconfirm that, like, you know, which version was used and there were like little bit of customization that we did. Let me check and up, update that. Sure. Okay, yeah. So that's it, that's on the thing. And there is, uh, since we wanted to digitize the complete uh, registers on the GPWCs, we have enabled the expenditure recording also. This is this is though it might not be uh, real time. So we expect and we educate them to add this on a real time basis. So maintain this data on a real time uh, basis. So basically, so we have enabled all the type of expenditure that they incur. Like you, you see, so this this is salary, missionary repair, others chlorination, water treatment, pipeline repair. New machinery, new pipeline incentives. Incentives is basically given to the uh, uh, the bill collector. So if bill collector is part of the committee itself, then it will be in, in the form of incentives. Otherwise, it will be in the form of salary if it is an outsider, if they are engaging somebody else. Electricity bill, name of the pay, PSPCL. Okay. So the, the, so we are maintaining, we, 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 as as they do the expenditure entry, we construct the master data. So basically, we the database keeps uh, building the master data for every consumer that they build. So so that next time onwards, when they when they type in, as they type in, they will they are expected to select on the drop down automatically. It's like it's learning by itself and building a master data. Okay, they are not expected to create a master data in place of all the vendors and then come and access it. So we made it simple. So we just capture the phone number of that. If, if it is a new guy, for example, um, if it is a new master, for example, if it's a new master like this, it will force the user to enter the mobile number using which the vendor master gets created in the backend. Okay. Otherwise, user is expected to just select uh, the master which is suggested by the system like this, then enter the amount. Uh, I'll just give this bill registered date. I'll just give uh, so this is for dashboarding expense from date. So, so though we have got we have received the bill in the month of September, this would be for the expenditure made between August 1st to August 31st or July 25th to August 25th. So, this will be the billing cycle of the particular expenses of the PSP cell or the electricity bill. And that's how you will also be getting your ATL and other bills, right? Even your water bill and others. So the billing will generally happen in the start of the next month. But billing period would be for July to July 25th to August 25th or July 26th to August 26th and so on. So that is what is being captured here. So that reporting also will be stronger. So the, 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 they, they can call out proper reporting out of this. They can know for which month, what was the amount spent. This is to construct of a of, of, of valid fiscal event or a valid fiscal transaction. So this, this information is captured as of now. And then pay bill date. So this will be in case of the vendor, if, if he has got a bill date, uh, that, so that is captured here as information. And in the same transaction, they can also mark whether it is paid. If it is paid and they can mark it as S yes, and then on, they can enter the payment date. So once the payment date is entered and keyed in, uh, they can attach few bills also for supporting. Okay, Once the payment date is entered and keyed in, there will be two fiscal transactions that gets created out of this. One is the bill, other one is the payment entry, payment in which. So based on this, only the expenditure. So the expenditure dashboard and the GPWC dashboard start showing uh, under which month the expenditure was paid, what was the amount of payment, what was the bill which was raised, and when was it paid. If it was paid in the month of 
uh, if, if it is a bill which is accounted in the month of August and if it is paid in the month of September, uh, like this. So this is not allowing beyond six because bill date itself was seven. So you can enter any date after that, right? Uh, okay. So uh, you can enter, you cannot enter future date also. So since it is seventh, it is allowing you to set only seventh over here. If the bill date is in the month of August, then you can enter any date between August to September. Okay, August to September of seventh, and then submit it. So if with this, there will be two, and then yeah. So let me show you the expenditure curve dashboard of the expenditure itself so yeah so particular month if you go in there are two types collection and expenditure so collection ka uh, statistics is what you see what is the demand what is the pending collection of that month what is the actual collection in that month collection from residential collection from commercial there was zero commercial connection that's why you see this and how many of them have paid as of now okay consumers paid how many residentials have paid how many commercials have paid and you can also search the information like by by uh, connection id or connection uh, name whatever and see how much of it is pending against that connection id okay similarly if you switch on to expenditure you will see what is the total expenditure recorded how much is paid so this is basically based on the flag that you select over there if it is paid or not paid right Good. Yeah. So that's the last piece I wanted to. So, so they're expected to record this uh, expenses. So update expenses basically for updating the expenditure that is already recorded in case there is, uh, if they've recorded on, only the bill and if they want to update the payment information against it, they can come over here and then do the uh, updation. Okay. If it is canceled, they'll not be able to cancel it. So there are not many bills that they've recorded over here. That's why you will see very, uh, less this thing. So this is a bill which is paid of type salary. I mean, the cinco six thousand rupees. And if they are marking it as paid now, it will the payment transaction also get created. And then after this, if they access the dashboard, uh, the corresponding expenditure will be displayed in the corresponding month in this way. Okay. Payment amount will get increased and expenditure will be the bills that are recorded in that particular month okay so apart from this we also have a, a state level dashboard which we have built using uh, the ifix platform so that we are trying to uh, it, it's a it's a, 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 a different program so this mgram seva is a uh, um, we can say exemplar under this I, IFIX mission itself, IFIX program itself. So IFIX dashboard is what, so basically if there is an adapter that is built between the IFIX platform and then the MGRAM save application, which will basically push the fiscal event onto the, uh, uh, onto the IFIX platform, which will basically uh, give out a insight on and uh, what is the uh, financial status, what is the uh, 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 so, no, uh, financial condition or financial state of every GPWC you know, uh, accumulated at state level, division level, circle level, and so on. So is, as, if, if you can see here, there is zone, circle, division, subdivision, section, and GPWC. I can choose by GPWCs also. I can choose by sections also, and so on, right? Uh, Okay, so these are the zones. It is getting slowly loaded. And this is a huge list of GPWC that we have loaded as of now. So we loaded data, just recently we loaded data for about uh, uh, 20, 20, 29 divisions, so which which will have around uh, uh, many GPWCs. It will be around roughly around uh, 2000 change GPWCs. Okay, and you can see that how the data is so, so we can uh, drill down to a specific GPWCs and um, we can select a particular division also. Uh, say, for example, if you select only Anandpur Sahib, it will display data only for Anandpur Sahib and so on. Okay. <laughs> okay it's taking time over here. Oh, that Anandpur Sahib doesn't have any data in that case. Yeah. Okay. So total demand, which was there, and it is compared with last year and so on. So, so this is basically a dashboard that we have made 
uh, for the admin administration uh, administration users at the state level who can at one shot view how many gpws are doing uh, not doing well and doing good and based on their performance they can also keep track of whether they need to intervene uh for ensuring that you know they are they are able to do the they are able to sustain uh, on their own self sustain uh, financially okay so so what happened was recently uh because of non payment of electricity bill uh, bills across all gpwcs there was a huge pile up of outstanding from uh, electricity bill department to department of water water dwss water and sanitation uh, Uh, the same. So, so, so do, since that connection is a tri-party department and that connection belongs to a government, the the uh, interest in doing this payment uh, regularly is very low. And uh, among GBWs, they were using it for their uh, regular expenditures, and there was about about I, I think about a amount a huge amount of about six hundred crore something amount was there, which was outstanding from department and which department GBWs had to pay up. And after that, they brought in a rule that you know, if seventy-five uh, percentage percentage of their revenue should be set aside for electricity bill payment only of expenditure of type electricity only. Rest twenty-five percent is used for other things like machinery repair, chlorination, water maintenance, and all that. So this was the rule that they brought in, uh, the order that they passed. Uh, so so now they are building up this. So the, this this platform and this dashboard and this uh, digitization of the data helps them to track on a real time basis. If if they are deviating from their payment, even even you know like you know in, in by in months or two months time, they can track and go down to the G privileges and accordingly uh, enable them or like you know get them do the payment without you know piling up the uh, expenditures. Okay. Yeah. So that's on the. dashboard i think uh, that's the final piece which i wanted to talk about mm. that's it so any questions any queries you can start putting on chat and qna while i just so there's i think there are a couple of uh, questions and, and most of these has been answered okay uh, Yeah. So there's a notification. Increment to question. We can take it up. Otherwise, we have to move to the next session on property tax with Nirbhay. Uh, and if time allows towards the end, we may look at you know addressing yeah uh, some things. I think this was one dot eight. I I'm not sure. Let me check and confirm. Yeah. One more session is there. One more question can be done. Yeah. So penalty and advance features are being built now. As we are talking, I think uh, the release timeline for penalty fees and uh, advance fees, advance functionality and penalty functionality is end of this month and next month onwards. Uh, this is this this was primarily needed for the uh, rolling out of DWS schemes. GPWC schemes are the ones which are handed over. DWS are the ones which are which are maintained by the department so uh, as part of that uh, scheme rollout they wanted to have this advance and penalty functionality as, as a mandatory piece of function so so we are building that and that will be rolled out that will be released by end of this month for the question raised by sajid mohammad sajid theek okay. hai Okay, and this is the not notification which I was talking about. So on monthly de demand generation for the collection done for the day, and as a reminder for the monthly demand generated, every uh, every notification. This is this will also go as an SMS and email, and for the users, email is like not 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 enabled in most of the cases because there is no email ID configured. SMS is the one which goes out to the uh, consumers and the GPWC users. so there are about 15 type of notification and sms that we have configured now uh, because department insisted to uh, block few notif uh, sms notification we have blocked about six notification as of now which was like you know reminder for expenditure entry reminder for demand generation reminder for uh, collection and uh, 
uh, uh, a pending collection reminder. And this will happen after 15 days of the month. So all these kind of notifications have been uh, SMS notification have been uh, removed, blocked, and disabled. Uh, this is just to you know um, maintain the cost impact that they were that they were the the, the SMS billing uh, or the message, SMS account that was getting used up. So they had raised complaint and we had to remove few things. Okay. Yeah. Thank you all. If you have no questions, I think we can close the session. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Satish. I think this is good. Uh, if any further questions, people can still post it and we'll yeah. figure out a way to respond to those. Uh, maybe in a uh, in a in a blog post or maybe as a uh, as a uh, as a combined uh, you know post through a community or through our blogs. Uh, and with that, we'll move on to the next one. Uh, we have Nirbhay Singh here uh, with us who will uh, cover uh, the modules related to property tax uh, built on digits. Uh, Nirbhay? Yeah. yeah, thanks. You so may switch on your video and start your shares and then we yeah. can continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Satish. Hope my screen is visible to all of you guys. So, yes. yeah, so we'll, we'll start with a brief introduction of property tax, and then we'll uh, we'll see uh, some use cases in demo environment. So. Uh, we often we use the terms uh, ULB. Okay, so ULB means the urban local body. Yes. The terms which is used for the municipal corporation, municipalities, uh, municipal councils, and Nagar Panchas. Uh, excuse me. If you may like to keep your screen in a slideshow mode. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it would be great if you can switch on the video if your bandwidth doesn't allow that. Uh, bandwidth may be the issue, so that's why I'm not switching on the video. If it is because maybe uh, then things not work properly, so that's why I'm keeping it out. Okay, so municipal councils and Nagar Panchas basically these are the you know, bodies which are called as urban local body, and these bodies basically represents the third level of govern governance in. Uh, and they are often called local governments and they are basically responsible for cert certain obligatory functions like water supply to domestics, industrials and commercial purposes, public health, sanitation, and conservancies and solid waste management, urban forestry, preventing health care, provision for urban amenities and facilities such as parks, gardens, playgrounds and uh, state lighting. So they, uh, so they basically to carry out these functions, they need funds, and they they get the funds from uh, sometimes from the government, such a grant from the state government, from the central government. But they have the means responsibility to raise their own fund as well. So for that purpose, means they uh, impose taxes on the the residents of the ULBs. So the property tax is one of the main tax which each and every residence has to pay for the ULBs. Okay, so then, so means what is property in that case? Means property tax, we are talking about property tax, that is the main source of income for the ULBs. Then what is property? So property is a building or an open plot in within the will be limit. So if, any, if it's a building or open plot of the usage of residential or non-residential, so that is considered as a pro property. And the owner of the property then has to pay the tax. So already we know that why will be levy property taxes. So they need funds to, to perform the certain obligatory functions. So they need uh, this fund. And why we as a property owner should pay it? So we should pay property 
tab first, first of all, uh, timely to enable the ULVs to keep the city neat and clean and perform their maintenance work and other functions. Now, we come to PG property tax. So, what is what is exactly the are there in the scope uh, functional scope of the property tax? So, it it has user registration and login. Then the session of a new property which is constructed but not yet registered with the municipal record. Modification of property already registered already registered property with the municipal record, but need uh, needs need some modifications uh, because there is some uh, new constructions or there is a change in usage or any other thing, which is cause the change in the tax amount. Then mutation of property mutation is nothing but if property is getting sold from one person to another person so now in the municipal record also the name to be transferred from one person to another person then search and view property details yes to search the property and view the detail of the property assessment of property tax so once the property is registered with all its detail with the municipal record now it's municipal municipality's responsibility to assess those property to the property tax and then generate the demands uh, and then bills bill pdfs distribute those bill pdfs and collect the property tax so digit covers demand billing and collection of property tax and there are some dashboard and reports so dashboards is not a part of this demo so here we have uh, the view of mobile view of the uh, property tax and, and there is a web view of the uh, property tax and we have this integrated with the uh, whatsapp as well for the collection of uh, property tax means your citizen can make a payment from the uh, whatsapp as well with, that, with other available means so what what are the things which are there for the uh, citizen in property tax so citizen can apply online from the comfort of from his home uh decision of uh, of new property apply for the application of the property apply for mutation of property pay property tax online without logging into the and logging to his account by opening a property so you can pay even the user uh, a person can pay for other properties as well I mean suppose i want to pay for my relative property so i can pay, pay the tax by searching a property and making payment online. Pay property tax that with login. With login, we'll get all our properties in my account. And then track the applications. So on the applications like uh, new property registration or modification of property or mutation of property, those applications can be tracked on the account. And then view the property detail. What are there for the employees? Applications employee from employee also create application on behalf of citizen so they can create application for new registration of property or updation of the property for application of the property they can employees can process those applications so there is an inbox and the workflow configured for the employees they can search a property and collect the property tax they can track the applications view the property details and generate the collection reports and this is the flow. So uh, for each and each and every application, this flow is there. Citizen or employee can create application. Then it goes to the document verifier, which is uh, employee in the ULB. Can verify the application and verify the documents which are enclosed with the application to, uh, to enable the ULB staff to process those applications. And then from document verifier, it goes to field inspector, who is responsible to uh, to perform a field visit and attach the field verification report. And then from field inspector, it goes to the application approver. And then the application, once the application is approved, uh, the requested uh, services made into effect. Uh, digit uh, offers the conf configurability of the digit. So, uh, like masters, so all the masters are configurable, and all standard masters which are available for the property tax across all the methods are configurable. 
assessment methods, configurability of digit two annual rental value and unit area value methods that also available. And uh, property tax heads. So all the heads are configurable. So uh, maybe in, in implementation, there are only few heads which are applicable, like only general tax and then water tax as a property tax uh, are applicable in other implementation would be more than two, three, four, uh, up to 13, 14 heads. <coughs> they combine to generate, a, to combine, uh, to uh, constitute a property tax. <coughs> so all the heads which are applicable to property tax are configurable along with calculation of penalty, interest, and rebates. Any additional detail that also be configurable and that will be captured at the part of, part of property registry. Property tax calculation. So property tax calculation is also customized. <coughs> in, in the use cases. So we'll go through a few of them, like citizen login and overview of features of for the citizen. First of all, we'll go through all the citizen part of the digit, citizen view of the property tax, digit property tax, and then that will cover public search and pay. Register a property, data property, transfer of ownership, employee search and collect. That is from, from employee side, assess a property and employee for best of registered property. Okay, so let's move to We'll move to, first of all, we move to citizen side of two. Okay, so uh, this is the part of uh, citizen login, I mean, selecting the language and the city. And then we can see here, let me move uh, move this to uh, mobile B. So that's how it, it will look like in the mobile. We'll avoid this uh, right hand side part as of now because uh, I have opened in a mobile B. That's why it's, uh, right hand side part is coming. So here we can see the services, all the services, property tax, and then other services are also there. M collect compliant tail license building plan approval. Okay, so we'll focus on property tax. So we have, if you see as a citizen side, we have search and pay, my bills, my payments, create a property, nothing but register a new property, my properties, my applications, transfer property ownership and location. So let's go with search property, first of all. So what can be done is what's it, what user can do is search a property by property ID or property ID or mobile number. You can see here we have. So first of all, user have to select a city. So as citizen may have multiple uh, may have properties in multiple cities, so he has to select a city first of all. And then can search a property by owner mobile owner's mobile number, unique property ID or existing property ID. The existing property ID is nothing but the old property ID, unique property ID, which is the current unique property ID, and then the mobile number, any one is needed. So suppose, and the second search is available based on the city, locality, and then door number and owner's name. Okay, so I'll go with uh, search by mobile number. 
Suppose I'm searching a property by a mobile number. So it will give, give me the result of all, all those, will give a list of all those properties which are in the logged in username. So I have logged in as a, uh, sorry, by the, uh, it will give the properties which are linked with that mobile number. Okay, so here we can see there are total five widgets, total five properties found. And almost all of them are having dues. Okay, so we'll go with this first. We'll see view detail. So on view detail, it will uh, show the view detail of pro property where we can see the proper unique property ID, billing period, bill number, and due date. And then the head wise uh, application of the amount. So total due, total amount due is this much. And if, there, if this property is having area, suppose this property, you can see the area here, there is some amount pending. So we can see the area details here. In, so this will uh, give the all the past bills which are pending for the payment. So we can see here, again, the bill number due date, and then the head wise amount displayed. And what was the total area? Six, six, eight, four, five in this case. And then, <clears throat> Uh, whether if, if user wants to make a full payment can make a full payment or may want to make a partial payment so that also allowed uh, the parts as of now the minimum partial payment limit is set to 100 rupees so you can see the message also here so not be less than 100 rupees so suppose i'm making a payment of 100 rupees only as of now so we'll enter amount and we'll go ahead with the payment here, paired detail is captured. So suppose I'm the owner of the property making this payment. I have searched a property and making this property. So paired detail automatically will be fetched from the owner's detail and will be attached with the receipt. But suppose I'm someone else who wants to make a property. This property doesn't belong to me. Okay, maybe belongs to my parents or to my other relatives. So then I have to enter my mobile number here, my name, and then we'll will move ahead. So I'll go with the owner as of now. Then we'll see the total amount due and the we'll get the payment list of payment gateways. So as of now in this instance, only one payment gateway is integrated, configured. So we'll go with that. And we'll get this payment gateway specific page. Here you can see. And that will it is specific, specific to payment gateway and may vary from gateway to gateway means which payment gateway is integrated based on that this UI will come. So suppose I'm, in, I'm selecting MasterCard as a type of card for the payment. And then we'll enter the credentials and we'll click on pay now. Take some time to complete the payment. And once the payment is completed, from the payment gateway side, it will send a request that payment is successful. And system will generate a receipt and will display the payment detail along with the option to download the receipt. Okay, can you see here? So a receipt can be downloaded from here. You click on download receipt. It will open a receipt in a PDF form. So this receipt is again, means this is customizable. If any implementation want to change the format or uh, anything else, the way the information is displayed, so it can be changed. And then go back to the home page. So again, we'll go to the home page and can we can see the all the service. Now this search and page opens. There is no need to log in. 
Now, suppose I am clicking on my goods, I need to log in into the accounts. I am logging in as a owner of the property and I can have to enter OTP. Then I can see all my bills here. Okay. So these are the bills which are pending. Just now we have made a payment, I think, to this property, 100 rupees. So you can see again, if suppose want to make a payment, we'll click on view detail. Bill detail will be shown. And then again, the same flow. I'm not going again into the same flow, but the flow is same. Here you can see the bill detail. If you want to make full payment, can make a full payment or want to make custom payment, partial payment can be partial payment can be made. And then on click of proceed to pay. Again, the same same flow is followed. I'll come back and we'll go into another feature. And then we have my payments. So my payments will give all the payment history. All my past, past payment has been uh has been performed for the properties which are associated with this mobile number. So we can see here, just now we have made a payment of 100 rupees so that is coming here. Here we have receipt date, receipt number. If you want to download the receipt, the receipt can be downloaded again. <clears throat> okay. We'll go back. Uh, before coming to Create property. We'll look into the look into my properties. So here we can see my properties. There are total four properties associated with this mobile number. You can see the detail, property ID, owner's name, address, and the status. If you want to see complete property detail, we'll click on the view detail and we'll see the total detail here. Property ID, total amount due, and then property detail address, pin code, city. Locality, Mohalla name, state name, door number. Then we'll have property assessment detail. Where the property uses type, property type, lot size in square uh, feet, number of floors, ground floors, unit unit uses type, unit. And this is the unit. So suppose a ground floor is divided into multiple units. So unit wise information is displayed. And then we have property owner's detail. So if, if this property has gone through a mutation, we can see here in the property owner's history. So this property is the first owner property, then gender and mobile number. All the detail is displayed with the documents which were attached at the time of registration of this property. Now suppose we want to perform an update of property, we'll click here, update property, and it will take the user to the update property application flow. I'm not going as a problem to update property flow. Come back. We'll see the application detail, my applications. In my applications, again, the, it will give uh, give the uh, give all the list of all the applications that has been applied uh, in the past. So we can see this is the application for the update property. And now the property status is active, means this application is completed, the flow. And here, this is for the new property creation. And I think we have one for the ownership, transfer of ownership property. So suppose you want to see this transfer of ownership property, application detail, we can see here, application number, property ID, application channel, that is a counter employee, means this application was initiated from the counter employee. Then the fee amount and what is the payment status of fee. So the fee amount was 2000 and it is paid. Then again, we have property address as, as we have seen the property detail. Transfer of detail, transfer of detail, that is who is who is the uh, the person from whom the property is getting transferred to the person transferring. Okay, so that's how it is coming. And then the mutation detail. So yeah, this mutation is pending in court. Uh, if, if yes, then what is the detail of the court case? So all this detail is captured, and then the registration detail, you know, whether this is because of sale deed or because of will deed, succession deed, or maybe some court case, or any other reason. Because of that, only this property is getting transferred. And then what is the property's market value? So based on this property's market value, 
mutation fee is calculated and the registration document number document is suited registration document value and the, then uh, the documents which are attached to avail uh, attached for the mutation of a mutation application and if you want to see the property detail from here you can see the property detail from the application and we can see the history ownership history so here we can see now two owners are there so date of transfer is giving 11th, 11th uh, july 2022 and earlier it was in the name of trade pricing and now it is got transferred in the name of nsp so if so again it is getting transferred then the new owner will come so that's that's what we have for the uh, application detail my applications now we'll do we'll create application for new property so here we can see first of all uh, information page is displayed on the documents which are required to register a new property or create a new property in the in municipal records so from there we'll come to when we start the application start with the type of property so what type of property it is whether it is independent building flat a part of building or vacant land so basically this is the, uh, the second one is but the, the flat in the apart okay so uh, in vacant land uh, the floor detail unit detail will not come so we will go with the independent building as of now here first of all we have to enter the plot area suppose it is it is 1800 square feet then whether this building is having number of basement suppose there is no no basement number of floors so in number of floors whether so this building has only ground floor or a building of ground floor plus one means ground floor plus first floor so that that way move next and then we have ground floor detail so we have to enter the ground floor detail here suppose uh, the uses of the ground floor unit one this is first unit is uh, residential then occupancy is the self-occupied and the built-up area is suppose it same of the, of the plot area in a square unit. Okay, suppose you want to add one more unit so it will allow to add one more unit okay then we'll i'm not adding any unit we're going to we'll move to next here we have to select the uh if you don't want to select a uh, means property location in the map okay or can you skip this section it is not mandatory and then it will take us to the pin to enter the pin code again if pin code is not known then can be skipped and then enter the city it cannot be skipped cities must to select and on selection of city then locality or muhalla also to be selected so, so suppose this small line is known as 120 feet road i have selected this and then I have to enter the street name so the street name is md road which is common and then the door number to be entered so uh, suppose it is 101 of the one okay. then the landmark this is also optional i am not entering anything as of now we'll skip and continue then you have to select the proof of address suppose the, in the proof of address i'm attaching the aadhar card so once the file is uploaded the button will enable automatically so button is enabled we'll move next now we have to select the ownership detail of the property so support is a it would be an institutional private institutional government a single owner or multiple owners so this single owner multiple owner are private owners individual owners <coughs> and institutional private will come all the suppose some commercial entities like some company or some some uh, industrial institute as well in the government government offices would be so suppose we'll go with the single owner as a 
will enter the name here. I'm entering my name as the then gender mobile number guardian name and move next then special category so based on the special category in some implementation they provide the exemption in on, uh, on the tax so uh, maybe if if the the owner of the property is below poverty line or different personal or freedom fighter handicap disabled okay arbido so based on that they they would provide a tax exemption so i'm selecting it of now nothing is applicable for this owner and the property the owner it is the same as the property address it means owner decides on the same property they have to collect attach the identity group <coughs> We'll move on the file that has <clears throat> it will take us to the application summary page so we'll go through the summary page if any change is needed on by any information we'll click on the change and we'll change the information and if everything is perfect we'll select uh that this declaration and we'll submit the application so on submission we'll get uh, this some success page and we'll allow how to download the application known as form. Right. We can see the detail which is which has been uh, entered for the create property application. We'll go to back to the home page. So <clears throat> I'm not going into other application as of now, means update of property and uh, transfer of property, ownership, permutation. If time permits, we'll go through these applications as well. So as of now, what we'll do, we'll complete the flow of new property application. So I have created application from citizen. Now we'll now I will log out from the citizen's account and we'll log in as an employee to uh, <clears throat> complete the processing of new application, uh, application for the new property registration, which, uh, which we have created just now. We'll log in as a so uh, uh, basically I have seen a flow from counter employee to document verifier to inspector to approver. So here what I did is I assigned all the role to a single user that is PT all. So I log in as a PT all and then we'll show you with this user only we'll show show you all the uh, all the rows activities. So here you can see the property tax card uh, with the information means how many applications are pending with this inbox and then new property registrations as a link for the counter employee because this user has the role of counter employee as well search property and search applications so this application can be searched by using search application as well and can be seen from the inbox so we'll go into inbox first of all we can see the inbox here it is common inbox across all the digit models, all the digit products we can see. So uh, we can see here uh, the filter section where we can see the, if you want to see, filter it by assigned to me only items. So then all the items that are assigned to me only will be listed in the, uh, displayed in the inbox section here. And if it, if it is selected, by default is selected assigned to all. So all the applications, uh, will be listed here. Then by locality also, suppose 100 bit only want to search by 100 bit row and then apply the filter. So it will give give all those applications only which are linked with this uh, locality. Okay. And then other like application type, applicas, uh, uh, and then application type, so on selection of application types and status of the application also will be displayed so whether whether the application is pending for document verification or pending for field verification or pending for approval will be displayed here if it is selected like that this side you can <clears throat> by default it is it is uh, means beyond SLA are pending since long 
to newly created that way it is ordered sorted if you want to change the sorting you can change the sorting here so suppose this just now we created this application it belongs to this locality so uh, even you can search by in this inbox you can search by application by application number property id and the mobile number as as well okay so suppose now i'm, I'm i want to search by mobile number and enter mobile number here and then it will give now only two applications are coming you can see so these two are these two applications are linked with this mobile number suppose i'm opening the one which which we have created just now here we can see the pin code and other detail which is coming which we have entered door number 101 oblique 1 oblique a then we have property uses property type build up property property uses type residential plot size 1800 and number of rows one and then <coughs> we have <coughs> ground floor detail in unit one i haven't we have added only one unit as of now residential self-occupied and the built up area is 1800 square feet and then we have the owner's detail so it is a single owner individual single owner the name is this gender mobile number so the address is displayed here and then we have the documents which we have attached as a as a address proof and identity proof and then we have the application timeline so the application is just created it says the status of application is created on 7th of September. Uh, this is something. Yeah. Then the action can be taken here. So what this user, what this user can do, can send back application to the citizen. If it is sent back to the citizen, citizen will get a edit option to the application. So you can edit the application and make the corrections. And so if suppose send back is then the user has to enter the comment here and choose if, if any attachment to be given to the citizen can be attached here and comment can be added here so user will, will be able to see the comments why the application has been sent back okay so i'm not sending back if, as of now i'll verify and forward it to the next user so it will go to the field inspector and while forwarding again means comment can be added when a specific comment to be communicated to the next level of uh, approver and then attach a file. So application uh, verified successfully says because this user has all the rules from counter employee till approver that's why this button is coming. If it is a once it is forwarded from document verifier to the field inspector, then document, document verifier no more will be able to see this take action button and you cannot take action on this application because this is already gone, got forwarded to the field inspector. Now what field inspector can do and send back to the citizen or send back to the counter employee or forward it to the next level to approval. So I'm forwarding it to the next level. <coughs> then it has come to the approvals login again this is because approvals login this uh, means this user is having approvals role as well that's why this button is coming <clears throat> in the back end i'm receiving the because i have entered my numbers i'm receiving all the not notifications or sms notifications as well with the change in each yeah, with the change in the state so state is the state of the application is getting changed as as and when we are Either we are forwarding the next level or we are sending it back to the previous or to city reject the application and that application will not will no more will be available for any further actions. So if suppose citizen has to means again citizen has still citizen has to means apply for the session of new property as soon as it a new application. So I'm approving the application with the approval. This property will get created and we'll add it to the municipal record in the digit system so from here this is the application now from here we can see the property data so this property is available now you can see here all the detail and same time now this property is available for the assessment of the tax transfer of the ownership 
and update edit of the property detail. So all three actions can be performed on this on this property now. So suppose I'm going to access this property to the tax so that I can uh, generate the demand bills and make a payment. So here we can see on uh, see I click on access of, access a property and then select the financial year 2022-23 is current financial year. It is giving me the detail of the uh, tax. So property tax is 5,400 says. Other heads are also there like you, any exemption is there, specific category exemption is there, our fire cess is there, cancer cess is there, rebate, any rebate if it is applicable. So here fire cess is applicable to 70 and the rebate because we are in a uh, current financial year, there is a rebate of 540 rupees. And then if there is any penalty or interest. So we can see here 5,100 total amount, which is which is assessed as a prop as a tax. Here we can, if if suppose or during the assessment, want to add any ad hoc penalty, any is still any penalty which is not calculated to be added. So can be added from here. You know, means maybe pending dues from earlier, some some manual bookkeeping, there is some dues there. Miscellaneous or uh, earlier assessment, miscalculation or earlier assessment, one time penalty or anything else is there. Same same way, ad hoc also, uh, rebate also can be, ad hoc rebate is also can be provided. So you can see here the heads are advanced paid by citizen earlier, maybe manually advanced earlier paid. So that is somewhere keeping in the books, not in the system. So that also can be, here can be provided. Okay, so that's how it is. The tax can be. Okay. Then we can see uh, next up again the property detail and then the calculation detail. How the how you click the calculation is this uh, tax is calculated and then we'll click on assess property. Once we'll click on assess property, property is assessed now. The tax is created and is stored. Okay, and then uh, employee if employee wants to go ahead and collect the payment can go ahead and collect the payment okay so if, if suppose you choose to proceed to payment you can go ahead and can here can either full payment or custom that they okay let's see from the start so here the it will show the uh, property id billing period you know bill number due date and then the property tax that entire head wise detail and because there is no areas that that's why that uh, past uh, past uh, uh, that detail is not coming here and then the payment methods whether full payment or custom payment so suppose this time it is full payment i'm going to collect we are going to collect then the payment more this is for the employee I, whether he's collecting the amount in cash or check or credit or debit card Okay, other, other, if it's configurable, if any other means of uh, collection is there, that also can be configured here. And then if, if this collection already got collected through a manual receipt, so manual receipt detail can be entered here. Okay, maybe on ground, they have already collected it and they have issued a manual receipt. So manual receipt number will be entered here, manual receipt date will be entered here, and then we'll click on collect payments. So this is non-mandatory because if it is directly in the system, there would not be the case where the manual receipt is created. So there is no need to enter anything in these fields. I am not entering anything and we'll click on collect payment. So then, then it will generate a receipt. So receipt can be, print can be taken out of the receipt. Okay, so that's how we'll go back to the home page. But this that so means this is the flow of uh, property registration. Registration. We will see means search property. What are the options available? So a property can be searched again by a unique property ID. Existing existing property ID means old property ID and the mobile number. Suppose I am searching a property by no mobile number. So I can, I can see the property list here. And at the same time on search if there is any due. 
uh, user, user can go ahead and collect the tax as well. So this is what, these are the properties which are associated with this mobile number. Suppose I want to search a pro property by, maybe by owner's name or door numbers. So I select a locality. So suppose one fifty road, we get a few property and door number is suppose I'm entering is, this is a fuzzy search. Suppose I have entered door number 101. So it will list all those property belongs to this locality, which is which door number start with 101. Okay, suppose I change 101 oblique one, then search. So now you can see only two properties where means door number start with 101 oblique one. Okay. Suppose I want to search a property with one door number start with 101 and the owner name start with nearby. So again, I'll get this two properties only. Okay. And then if we click on this property ID, we'll, we'll be able to see the property today. Right. And from view ownership history, we'll be able to see the ownership history. And uh, from payment history, we can see the payment history. So we can see there is one receipt, I think 100 rupees. We have made a payment here. And from here, we can download the receipt also. So again, we'll come back to the property information page. And in property information page, we can see the take, take, take actions here. To means again, the all those three actions are there. Assess a property, transfer property, add it. So suppose this property assessed by year only, current year only. And suppose you want to assess for previous year or previous to previous year, you can assess here. Okay. Go ahead and assess a property again. So this is that's how such property works. Then we have search application. So in search application, we can see the application can be searched by application number, property ID, mobile applicant mobile number, application type, suppose a new property, and then application status. Suppose so now it is active. Okay. okay. And then uh, this is for for this uh, we need uh, date also. So when that particular application was created. So suppose I'm okay. So it will list all those. Applications are created, uh, which are for the new create property and created within this date with the status active. Okay, suppose change the status to workflow. There is no search application. Okay, so that's how the search application works. Okay, let me show you one application detail, how the application detail is displayed. So we'll click on application number. Here it will take us, this will take us to the application detail page. Here we can see the property details, property details, then the ground floor. You know, and then we have the timelines, documents and timelines. And view detail will take us to the view property detail. Suppose want to say a, a C application, mutation application here. Let me see if any mutation application is there. It's not there, okay. We'll, we'll search by mobile number. So we have one mutation application. If you want to see the mutation application detail, you can see from here, fee amount and fee status, along with application number, unique property ID are displayed on the top. And then we have property address, pin code, city, locality, Mohalla. 
the tail, then transfer detail is there and transfer detail is there. We have seen that. Then we have mutation detail, registration detail, and then the application timeline when the particular application was created and got up. So and on click of view detail take us to the take us to the property detail. We have the downloads, so we can download application, mutation application from, from here in PDF, mutation fee receipt, PDF form, and mutation certificate in PDF form. So here we can see this is certificate. certificate. So we completed, uh, so only the thing is that update property and mutation that flow is spending rest of, rest of the things we have already completed. So if there is any question, Yeah, so there are a few questions in the uh, Q and A uh, tab. Yeah. If you can check it out. Uh, uh, and then also, uh, we are also running past time, so we may need to see that, you know, how would like to conclude this. Yeah, so let me see if we can answer a few couple of questions here. Uh, uh, one is that how does the PT links to the land management system? Are it the same? So, see, uh, basically, if you see land management and property management are two different things. Here in, in property tax system, we register both means land means the open plots only, no, no other land. And then the buildings too for the assessment purpose of the tax. Okay, so if, if it is to be linked with the land management, maybe a separate system that to be integrated with the DJ property tax and that is possible. Then uh, in case that two citizens have registered the same property does the same identifies that. So if two citizens are registering the same property, the see, uh, first of all, it is a kind of application which is coming to the ULB staff. Okay, so yes, if, it is, if it is for the same property, then during the field visit, ULB staff will identify that system is not identifying at them now. That is the field inspector has to identify that these are the, these two applications are for the same same uh, property. And then they will be established having the right to reject those applications. Okay, so that's how it is handled. System, systematic way, there is no systematic way to identify that these two applications are from the same property. Can we assess the, access so i think we have given access of already we some uh, one instance access given to partners i think to outside people we i think before i would request you to please check once and the same mobile number can be used by the more than one person yes same mobile number can be used by more than one person and but both the person will be identified separate persons What if different city is selected for employee to which he does not belong to? Uh, see, while creating employee user record, we have to select the city. And with the user mobile, with the employee user, there is an option to add multiple cities as well. So he'll be able to see all the, means he has to select the city while he's working, he can work, he can work, uh, on a single city applications only, but he have the option to switch to the second city, which, which he is mapped with, user has mapped with, and can work, work, work with those cities application as well. Okay, so if he's, he doesn't belong to that city, not, not at all mapped that city with that user, he's not able to see those applications which are created for that city. What is the formula used for PT assessment? So it is annual intervalu as of now configured in this demo instance. 
but a uh, 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 unit area method also can be configured. So the formula as of now is specific to the Punjab uh, implementation, but it is custom configurable and customizable. What if different city is selected for an employee to which he does not belong to? Then that application, if he doesn't belong to, means see, for it is not you citizen, it is for the property. If that property belongs to that city, it's fine. If, suppose a city, user has to select a city, right? So if, if he's selecting some other city, suppose city A, city B is there. See, so a uh, citizen login in citizen login is is all the cities are available to that user. So he can select either city A or city B. Respectively, it will go to the go to the that city's employee users inbox. That application will go. So if he is selecting wrong city, obviously that means that application is going to be rejected by the employee user. That will be employee user. So I think this is uh, it for um, all the Q&A side of it. On the staging digit, I think we'll get back to you. I didn't get the name of the person here, but we'll see uh, how do we address to this. Uh, I'll send a query to internally and we'll get back as soon as we get a response. So I think Nirbhar, this is good. Uh, uh, anything else that you would have, you would want it to cover, maybe you can look at a next session and see so, how do we you know look at yeah so in the next session we'll try to cover i think we have this whatever we have demonstrated with a couple of times we have demonstrated it so we'll try to cover uh other two applications as well means update of property and mutation of property okay taking so um so maybe we will uh, uh and when we do our next session maybe we can do that and yeah yeah maybe... We'll highlight with the agenda itself that in this session we'll cover these features. Got it. Got it, then. Uh, this is fine. I think uh, I've got a response on this uh, uh, staging site as well. This is open to all. I guess people need to register that. Uh, uh, but And also they can look at uh, the, uh, you know, how to access this uh, link yeah. i'm putting it in the chat um so uh, whoever uh, mr anonymous miss anonymous you can check it out um thank you Nibha, uh, for your uh, time and session uh, i hope it was useful for all the attendees uh, please do leave your feedback after the session uh, guys and we'll catch up again at 2 p.m uh, for the next session on online uh building approval uh so building plan approval session thank you everyone thanks a lot yeah thanks